In this video, I'll check out what happened in round two of rugby championship. Check it out. Welcome back to Skinny Brew Rugby guys, as you can hear I have a bit of a cold so sorry if I lack a bit of enthusiasm, it's not the games, it's my voice and my nose and everything. As you can also see I'm wearing the new Australian away jersey, my girlfriend actually got it for me for my uh, hitting the 200 milestone on, on um, YouTube. Uh, for YouTubers there's two very important things to hit, that's a thousand subscribers. Uh, to actually get paid and then also the 4,000 watch hours you need to get those two things to ever actually start getting some uh, money for what you are doing but thanks to all who has been helping me I am actually far over that 200 by now uh, I actually hit the 1,000 watch hours already so that's great for me I am almost there 25% roundabout and thanks to everyone who has been supporting me, I really appreciate it. So this weekend did not have the best rugby to watch. We had a 16-all draw between the the Springboks and the, the All Blacks in Wellington. It was a pretty scrappy game and not the best to watch. And then Australia beat Argentina 16-10 to in a game that Argentina will probably not think of one of their best games. On Super Brew... The best, the best on the on Super Brew for this weekend, John seven seven seven, and then Mitch. He also did well, and then the leader is now John triple seven. Well done to you. Let's get into the first game. First up, it was the sixteen all draw between New Zealand and South Africa in New Zealand. It was a pretty scrappy game for both sides, possession wise. Uh, actually, the New Zealanders had dominant possession, 80 or 58 percent possession to the 42 of South Africa. Uh, New Zealand actually only gave away eight penalties to 11. But if you looked at those penalties, most of them were actually in their own 22, where they would rather give away three points than five points. They've always done that, and that's what they did in this game as well. And then there was a bunch of handling errors as well in this game. It was absolutely crazy. Ultimately, this is a game of what could have been. The, the New Zealanders, Bowden Barrett missed two penalties in that game. And Pollard missed one penalty. That, of course, could have changed how the outcome of the score was. Then, of course, that try from New Zealand that a lot of South Africans are talking about. And New Zealanders are just shrugging it off a little bit. Um, where Bowden, I'm actually going to bring a picture up next to me, where Bowden looks like he might have stepped marginally on the line. Everyone's going to have a different opinion on that one. On the line is out, but that's not the point to me. There was also what looked like could have been a forward pass in the lead up to the thing. And that's not blaming anyone or blame shifting anyone. I mean, it was a draw. So I think we can actually bring this point up a little bit. It's... Just the refereeing has not been the greatest and this is from a New Zealand perspective as well. They are, you guys are also going to look at that where Ritalik got injured from a from a ruck entry from Archia Sneijman. Um, look, the refereeing hasn't been consistent throughout this whole competition, uh, well of two weeks and then the Super Rugby leading up to it. Uh, a lot of tries wouldn't have a review and a lot of easy tries has a review and then things like Tupo last week getting a yellow card for a ruck entry and then Archia not getting one look it was two different cases to me if I uh, to me Archia was in the right but it's probably because I'm South African so everyone will have a different opinion on that one but it's just the refereeing I don't know if it has been at its best um Especially to, in the lead up to that try, everyone was, well, where I was watching, everyone was yelling, he was out, he was out. Because uh, he was very close to the, the, to the line, so most referees would actually re-look at that specific action, but he didn't. Uh, but that's not even to me a point, because look, it was anyway very poor defense from Mapimpi on that, uh, on that left side of the field. He just shot, uh, shot up going for an attacker where there were already two defenders in front of him. They got the overlap. So to me, I would have given them the, that try anyway because they deserved it. It was very poor defense from South Africa. So I'm not complaining about what, that one. I'm just saying 
maybe the refereeing in this year's competitions all over hasn't been the best not to justify why we should have won or why we should have lost or whatever it's just bringing up a point maybe you have a bit, a bit of a different opinion on it it was definitely a game of two halves south africa put new zealand under a lot of pressure in the first half only to have it be done to them in the second half i think in the first half the the position was pretty much 50 50 and then from there on the New Zealanders got over 60% of the possession of the ball in the second half. South Africa was under pressure in, at line-out time from, from the start. Marks and Bunambi, they didn't have their best games with throwing the ball in. And look, that's been an issue of them for a pretty long time. So I don't know what to do about that. Our best line-out thrower is probably Scott Brits. But I don't think he's the best hooker out there. He's more there for his experience. The scrums went well. Uh, we didn't dominate at all, the South Africans didn't dominate at all and New Zealand actually also didn't dominate and they just had one scrum way New Zealand dominated and then straight after that some substitutions came on. Uh, a guy like Trevor Nayakani who came on changed the game completely. He, uh, we got some scrum dominance after that and that's where we actually could get our fight back. The game is pretty hard to reflect on though. Um, it, there was a lot of penalties. No one actually had a brilliant game on the field. It's difficult to find a lot of positives from this game. Only a lot of things to build on and see where you can uh, fix a few things. South Africa kicked the ball away a lot. There were no, was no desire to actually run with the ball, spreading the ball to the wings and actually running with the ball till the end where they actually did it and Colby probably got the ball on the wing for the first or the second time in that game and he made a try so like I said there's it's a game of what could have been what they could have done and what would have worked better New Zealand actually the same thing happened with them Sonny Bill Williams at 12 he was a bit slow with the ball a lot of the times if he would have passed the ball out wide a bit quicker there was game on for them and they could have had a lot more tries in this game with a victory for sure if you looked at the gaps South Africa was creating for them. But South Africa has, the, has that rush defense that is really putting South, um, the New Zealanders under pressure. And that game of rush defense is what Rossi said he's expecting for the World Cup. A lot of teams are going to try and do the rush defense thing. Because a lot of teams can't handle that defense coming to them. But even though that rush defense is how he's thinking the World Cup will go... Why is the guys putting so, mi so many missed tackles on the field? 13 for South Africa and then 9 missed tackles for New Zealand. But what South Africa did really well, they won 10 turnovers in that game. So the combination with Marks and the 3 loose forwards actually did work pretty well if you look at that. If I look at the final score, the 16 all draw, to me no team actually deserved to win this game. So I'm pretty happy with that draw. It's... It was a scrappy game. If you look at the game again, I watched it twice. Um, there was no real team that actually put their hand up to win the game. And you can really just reflect on a lot of problems in the game. There was some shining lights again. A guy like Herschel Yankees, he snatched a try at the end with Pollard really coolly putting it over the poles um, after the hooter sounded. Uh, leaving South Africa a lot happier than New Zealand would ever be with that draw over at their home. As I said, the game was a game of defense, but New Zealand's attack was so much better than South Africa. They beat 22 defenders, where we only beat 7, and then 12 clean breaks to the 3 of South Africa. Mahunga at 10, uh, there was a lot of uh, hype building up to him at 10, and Barrett at fullback. Barrett again took the show, Mahunga didn't have a great game on the field. Again, what could have happened if Mahunga was kicking at the goal from the start, his kicking percentages are just so much better than Bowden's. Uh, if you reflect on that, they could have won by far as well. So, like I said, there's a lot of things to think of. There's not a lot of positives you can take from this game. The midfield from South Africa, that's probably still an issue. The 12 spot, the Allende, Esterays and Stein. We've seen all of them play a bit now and all three of them hasn't been doing well. All of them have been... Uh, on the back foot or they've been stagnant they haven't really shined on the field and did anything 
Um, though he had a great game, his defense was really up to uh, up to standards. Where Krill, first tackle, he came onto the field, he missed it. Uh, he was bumped off pretty badly, uh, and he missed a couple after that as well. Let me know your thoughts of this game as we go into the Australian game. In many respects, this game was a lot different to the first one, but still, there was a lot of things that were similar in the two games with Australia beating Argentina 16 to 10. Both sides really ran with the ball in this game, but still there was a lot of mistakes. Uh, in the first half, 21 handling errors, 15 turnovers, 32 missed tackles um, for the two sides combined. It's just an error-ridden a game in that first half. For the Argentinians, it's not the game for them to remember. They have played much better for the Jaguares this season and last week as well. Um, but you have to also reflect on how far Argentina has come as a team if they are ruining this game where they lost to Australia in Australia, which years ago would have been a dead given. Everyone would have understood it. Now, everyone actually expected a bit of more of a fight from Argentina. Look, the score looks okay, but on the field, Australia was more dominant in most facets. Lee Alifano, he, with, with his miracle comeback to the international stage, he outshone Sanchez in the game. Sanchez, he's not been the best in those last two games. Honestly, I think Bonilla has been good in that little bit of time every time he comes onto the field. Yeah, and I think he should be at number 10 against the box two weeks from now. What do you think? He's been playing well um, for the Aguares as well. And he's been looking more threatening. The whole line has been looking more threatening when he is at 10. Into some of the stats, possession-wise, 47% for Australia and then 58% possession for Argentina. Missed tackles, 31 missed tackles from Australia to the 13 of Argentina and then penalty wise 8 to 6. Uh, 6 again very good from Argentina and the overall amount of penalties also less than the first game we had this weekend. Argentina scrum stats 7 out of 9 but the scrum stats are a little bit better than what was actually happening on the field. Their scrum didn't perform well, they were in the back foot most of the time and they had to have quick servers out of the scrums, otherwise they would have had a lot of penalties against them. Line-out time, they also lost two line-outs, which has been a facet of the game they have been doing really well on, so they've got, they're going to want to improve on that. For Australia, the win will do them a lot of good. They did look better than they played against South Africa, um, but I think it was more down to a poor game from Argentina, uh, they just did not look like they actually had a great bond on the field and would have won the game. But if Australia did play the same way they did against Argentina in this game, uh, two weeks from now against New Zealand, would they honestly win? I don't think so. Not with this strategy, not with how they played. If you're going to miss 31 tackles in the game against the All Blacks, they're going to run your, the score ragged against you. For me, there was only one guy that stood out for Argentina in this game. Isa, he had a very good game. The guy from Europe, he's been doing well. I like Moroni as well at 13. He played pretty well. I know him as a wing, but I know, I know a lot of people actually say he is actually a center. But I think Argentina missed Buffelli a bit under the high ball. I know Tukulet is very good, but Buffelli just has a different class to him uh, under the high ball. He's very good with that. Both teams need to improve if they want to play well against South Africa and New Zealand two weeks from now. Uh, those two teams are honestly the two better sides between the four sides at the moment. So if these two sides want to do anything two weeks from now, they will have to improve because South Africa and New Zealand will be trying to go out and get as many points as they can since there's only one point separating them at the top of the rugby championship and it's the last round of the championship so everyone will be going for that title. And that's what happened this weekend guys. If you want to check out any of my other videos, check here next to me. I don't know which side I'm going to pop it up. Also, uh, let me know your thoughts on the weekend. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of my content and then I'll see you guys later this week. Cheers.